We're going to um, call the meeting to order at 6.37 p.m. And the members present and participating are Steve O'Leary, Rich, Richard Walner, Andrew Schultz, Leanne Gonzalez, and Catherine Manupelli. And for those who are listening at home, it would help if you muted your um, phones. And if you do have questions or comments, there's a function for you to raise your hand um, during the different portions of the meeting. So you feel free to raise your hand. Michael Gilberto will see that and be able to um, catch you in, I guess, is how we're working it tonight. So. Yeah. There's a mute me button on the right hand side. You can see the participants and you can mute. That way we don't hear any kind of feedback. So we typically begin with the Pledge of Allegiance and I don't want to stray from that, especially now. So I'll just recite it for everyone. And I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I can still hear feedback if people that are listening wouldn't mind, wouldn't mind muting yourself. Um, and I just want to thank those of you who are joining us. We are going to be meeting jointly with the Finance Committee team. We're in the midst of a very unsettling time with this COVID-19 pandemic. And meeting remotely is just one of the ways that we're going to be um, effectuating the containment measures that have been ordered. And we've all heard about these increased numbers of um, those that are living with the virus and those that have passed from the virus and that can be alarming but it's important to know that the fact of the matter is that the testing has increased so we're going to see these numbers it's expected that these numbers will increase because of that finally that they'll be tested for people um, and also we're going to be members going to have the opportunity to speak as well as the town administrators for some updates. So there's some common sense containment measures that are being taken, which we've heard social distancing, making sure you're washing your hands with soap and water frequently. Um, there was a new change today, which was no gatherings of more than 10 people. And there was a new no, no contact order today issued by the governor. So there's no recreational activities or athletic activities, regardless of the number of two people or 10 people or 20 people. We can have no close contact sports out in our parks. It didn't close our parks, but it did, did um, order that that type of use of the parks be refrained from. So we have people yeah. trying to effectuate that right now. I also want to say on behalf of the board, I want to thank our town administrator and our police chief, our fire chief, our finance director, our board of health director. These are the people that have been working around the clock for us to get things taken care of, um, to take care of the town when the Immediacy Act became clear when the governor issued his orders on March 10th. So on behalf of the board and of the citizens of our town, we also want to thank our first responders. We know and appreciate how prepared our finest and bravest are all ready to handle these types of situations. And we thank you for all of your efforts. Um, if you find yourself in a situation where you are experiencing symptoms and you need to contact our police and fire department, please let them know when you call you're experiencing symptoms so they can take adequate precautions. This is just another common sense containment measure, and it's as important for them as it is for the rest of us in town. We need our first responders to be healthy as we weather this crisis. And it bears repeating over and over again how grateful we are for our first responders' dedication. We also want to thank our town employees. While everyone has been isolated, you know, with their families and out of school and dealing with those situations, our town employees have been stepping up to alter the way that they're conducting business on our behalf to make sure the town keeps running for us. And it's one of the reasons why, you know, we have to um, 
we do have to go forward with meetings like this because there's deadlines and operational issues that we have to keep going on and we have to adhere to, particularly regarding the budget approvals and appropriations so that everything remains running smoothly and can continue to be provided by, to, the, to us, to us as a town, to our citizens. And I want to thank, um, uh, thank and appreciate Senator Bruce Tarr, his staff, and he have been in constant communication with us with regular and immediate updates for us of all the information, the special legislation, the emergency orders that are being issued, and as well as um, Representative Brad Jones, too. They've been in constant contact with town officials with us to let us know what's going on. We already know how dedicated they are to our town, but we still want to just thank them and appreciate all the efforts that they've been um, taking for us. It's been an immense help as we work through this, these things for the town. Um, it's many, many people have been working together to help us keep things running and keep everyone safe. And so um, we're, we're facing some very difficult and uncertain times, and there are several resources available to assist our residents. You'll likely hear some of these highlighted by each of our board members and by our town administrator during their personal comments or their board reports. This time brings out the best in people. Unfortunately, it brings out the worst in people. Um, so I just want to let our... Um, Social Security recipients know the Social Security Administration issued alerts to be aware of scammers attempting to tell you that your benefits won't continue. It's just a scam. So do not give out your personal information to anyone over the phone. And the silver lining of this is that it's brought out the best in people, especially in our town. So thank you to all the individuals who've stepped up to provide aid and comfort giving, delivering food to elderly residents who need it, arranging to continue meals for students who rely on it. Real, they're relying on these school food programs and they're out of school. Thank you for our religious leaders. We've had virtual church. We've had virtual prayer services. We've had broadcasts of services. We've had several crafty sewers in our community who've been sewing masks. Laura and other members of our community have been donating masks and gloves to medical facilities due to the shortage that's become apparent to us in this crisis. We have a brand new volunteer group which assembled to assist anyone in need with anyone who wants to help. And people just connecting with and continuing to check up on elderly members of the community who are isolated right now. And just countless other people who are doing small and large acts for everyone to help get them through this time. And so we've heard this over and over again, this quote, it's been rewritten, it's been rephrased many ways. And I'm going to repeat it the way Martin Luther King said it. The ultimate measure of a man is not where it stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. It's definitely a time of challenge for us where we see people's true colors come through. And it's a moment for us to be proud to be from this community. We have an amazing and dedicated town workforce, a town administrator, public safety director, first responders, and our citizens in this town stepping up to do whatever they can do to help others through. These are times when we see our true leaders rise to the occasion. And for you leaders in our town, we see you, we're grateful. We appreciate and applaud you. We will make it through this, and I believe we'll be a stronger and a more connected community as a result. And with that, I'd like us to let the town have been, unless any members would like to add any comment now or wait, I do want to move along to, I see no hands, but Michael, are you looking at the hands? Um, I, there was a hand up a moment ago from Patty. Uh, it looks like it might be down now. All right. Oh, there it is. I can see. On. Let me see. I'm gonna unmute Abby. Go ahead, Abby. I can, I can unmute myself. No, <laughs> but <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to say that the hyperlink that was included in the um, uh, in the notice didn't work for me. 
So I have a Zoom account and then I'll paste in the meeting number. This meeting number and then all the other times on the account. And that got me through. Now, if anybody else has had a hyperlink that was included in the uh, window for tonight, that's one way around it. Well, the phone number is also included in there. I think some several people are joining us by by phone as well. All right, so let's um, let's uh, call uh, call the first first order of business, which will be a COVID nineteen update to from our town administrator. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, I'm going to abbreviate my comments because much of the things that I, I was going to highlight, you have highlighted there. Um, we've been working on this issue going back uh, a number of weeks um, as I've been updating the board and the community, and um, our efforts have really increased. I do have on the call here the public safety director and the health director. Um, they are they have been obviously um, response. Um, there's a lot going on actually are coming down. So um, I have them now, but they do have other work to tend to. Um, also, um, we might be able to provide you just a brief update so they can resume things that we're working on. Um, just in terms of the kind of the newest information that that's um, you know, we're continuing to implement on the situation concerning COVID-19. And we do it so using the guidance from the state and federal government. Uh, we were notified of a second presumptive positive case uh, late last week, and we are in the process of investigating case and notifying contacts as defined by the Department of Public Health and the Centers for Disease Control. So that's Mr. Gilberto, yes. I don't mean to, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I'm, I don't know if the other members are getting, there's a lot of feedback here, so if anyone has joined us, if you could mute, that would help with the transmission a little bit more clearly. If people who are joining us by phone could mute, that would that would help us to hear Mr. Gilberto clearly. Or if Michael, if there's a way for you to mute everybody and then just wait till a hand is raised, I think that might help. Yeah, I, I can do that. Um, I'm gonna click mute all, if that's okay with everybody. Just raise your hand if you wanna. Um, Okay, so I've got everybody muted. Um, can you just nod if you can hear me? <laughs> Good. All right. Thank you. So as I was saying um, a moment ago, we were notified of our uh, second presumptive positive case here in North Reading, um, and we are investigating that case um, as is required under the guidelines, um, and we'll be notifying any close contacts of that case um, of, uh, of that, um, that notice being re received by the town. Um, I'm just going to go through the uh, general update on the state of the town's operations here in, uh, in town. Um, there was a local uh, declaration of emergency approved by the Board of Health on Monday, excuse me, last Thursday, and we are asking the select board to take action on that this evening. As the chair mentioned, non-essential businesses have been ordered to close by the governor uh, with guidance that's been put out at the state level. Um, with regard to things here in North Reading, our town hall remains operational. However, many of our functions have been transitioned to remote location through April 7th. So residents are reminded that many of the financial transactions that you can do with the town can be done online on the town website. And we'll be putting up a, a, an updated um, briefing for people on the website today. Uh, and the fee for many of the services that uh, are associated with the financial transaction has been suspended. There are other services that can be accessed by the town's website. And I would encourage our residents to go to www.northreadingma.gov or to email if you have contact information um, from a previous interaction. Um, but in the worst case scenario, um, all of our phone numbers are working and we're asking folks to call and leave a message so that uh, the call can be returned by the appropriate department. And we've got a succinct listing of phone numbers that we're gonna post on the town website um, uh, later this evening um, to sort of streamline the communication. Uh, Madam Chair, you mentioned individuals and residents that are in need of assistance at home are encouraged to reach out to In This Together 01864 on their website, which we'll post online. 
Um, we've established a human service hotline here at Town Hall for anyone who would prefer to call a Town Hall as well. That number is 978-357-5300. Uh, town's human service departments, led by the veterans agent, the elder affairs director, and the youth services director, have been coordinating with in this together um, since last week. Senior Center has suspended all programming through April 13th to remain staffed and accessible via telephone during working hours at 978-664-5600 or by email. Uh, but the building is closed for walk-in service. Um, Meals on Wheels program remains operational. Uh, we were looking to accommodate with one-to-one -one transportation um, out of the town hall, out of the um, senior center, but now um, those are being evaluated on an as-needed basis. Uh, my understanding is through in this together for 1864. Just a couple of other things that have um, changed in the past day or so. Um, the Hillview Golf Course uh, was open, but it will close uh, effectively the end of today today, so it has closed and remain closed through April 7th. Our parks, including um, Ipswich Park and the track at Arthur Kenny Field are open for passive recreation, but the uh, other amenities that have uh, surfaces that encourage, or that could promote the transmission of viruses or the gathering of large crowds, those have all been closed and we would ask that the public respect the signs that have been posted um, regarding closure notices at those facilities. Um, the Flint Memorial Library has been working hard to open a virtual library, which is available on their website at flintmemoriallibrary.org slash at dash home. Um, we have suspended programming uh, in the activity room uh, as well as walk-in service at the library, but this virtual library is now, um, now open. And our police and fire departments remain operational, uh, although we've put guidelines on the website for how to access those facilities uh, by telephone. Um, and, um, and and also modifying the in-person um, approach should people be looking to walk in. A couple final notes, the food pantry does continue to operate, although clients may see continued changes to the way that it operates here out of the town hall in the, next, in the coming weeks. And North Reading Public Schools will be closed through um, April 7th in accordance with the governor's uh, order. So with that, that, that concludes my update. I'm going to um, I guess I'll look for the hands, or Madam Chair, I'll unmute you if you're not able to unmute yourself so that um, you can continue. So with that, that, that concludes my uh, I have any questions? Um, members have any questions with regard to the updates? I see no hands. So moving on to the next order of business is the local declaration. Mm -hmm. Did I see Mr. O'Leary's hand? Yeah, just uh, Madam oh, Chair. Mr. O'Leary, I didn't see it. That's okay. <laughs> this is all new. <laughs> uh, but first of all, you know, congratulations uh, to the town administrator for being able to pull this together. <laughs> Not an easy task like herding cats here. Uh, but anyway, just a couple of comments in relation to, you know, what's going on and how we're pro proceeding here. You know, just again, you did a fine job, Madam Chair, of uh, summarizing everything that's taken place and congratulating and thanking people. Uh, so I just want to echo those comments. But in addition to that, you know, I think, um, you know, we just want to mention the, the healthcare workers, you know, grocery store and uh, pharmacy uh, employees who are, you know, going to keep our uh, community running well and uh, servicing us. You know, get our first responders uh, certainly have a lot on their plate. I just want to uh, acknowledge uh, the governor, you know, taking a timely and appropriate action. Uh, this particular time it seems to be uh, on top of the issues and uh, seems to be handling things, as I said, in a timely and appropriate manner. So that uh, I know we're all appreciative of that. And again, as you mentioned, uh, uh, Senator Tyron and uh, Representative Jones have been in constant communication with us. Uh, just, just as an aside, um, I noticed a lot of people out this weekend working in their yards and things of that nature, and I just didn't know if the administration was planning on uh, whether or not the uh, DPW yard was going to be open or not, you know, for people to bring um, leaves and things like that down there or not, and brush. Um, people might, uh, people are going to be looking to do an awful lot of things. I mean, we're all, uh, we're in a, a mode of a behavior modification here. And this is a new territory for a lot of us. And, uh, and I think um, the more we can uh, accommodate, uh, the better, but I don't know if there's been any thought given. Uh, town administrator uh, doesn't have to respond right now if he doesn't have an answer as to whether or not. I know that it's supposed to be open April 1st, but uh, it's going to open it sooner, or is that still on schedule? Um, so we, we haven't uh, 
haven't quite gotten that far out just yet, uh, Mr. Vice Chairman, but that's something that we'll keep the public apprised of in the coming days. Yeah. And again, just in relation to, uh, you know, what's happening at the federal level, you know, I, I'm hoping that the uh, response would be a little more timely. I think they had a little bit more advanced notice and could have done a little bit more, but uh, it's good to see that they're responding now to uh, the needs of uh, each state. Uh, I hope that the Congress, again, uh, takes appropriate action to take care of the uh, ordinary citizens uh, primarily and first and foremost, uh, rather than the corporate citizenry. And, uh, you know, I look forward to them taking a favorable action in short order. So uh, with that, again, I just would again recommend and urge our citizens to uh, to heed the warnings. You know, this is real. This isn't a hoax. And, uh, you know, if we do our part, hopefully it becomes less of an event. Because if we are doing our part, it would be less uh, people infected and uh, our medical system won't be overwhelmed, which is what we're anticipating. So uh, if we all do our part, uh, hopefully uh, it becomes less of an event than what we're anticipating. So you know, we're in it together. Let's uh, ensure that we remember that. And again, uh, we don't need to stock up on things. The grocery stores are going to be fine. They're going to have plenty of supplies. There's no need to hoard. And uh, you know, let's just keep that in mind because you know we're, we're, we may be buying and hoarding on us. On our part, means that our neighbors and friends and family won't have what they need to. So uh, from all that we've heard, uh, the supplies are there. We just need to allow the uh, the stores to stock the shelves and just take and get what we need because we haven't been locked down yet. We're still going to have access to the grocery stores and the pharmacy. So uh, let's just act appropriately and be concerned for each other and look out for each other. Uh, with that, again, thank you again, Madam Chair, for your comments. I think you were spot on. And um, to you, town administrator and our town employees and public safety director and all, I think you're doing a terrific job in responding uh, to what we're dealing with right now. Thank you. Madam Chair, through Michael, I cannot see people when they raise their hands. Well, Mr. Gilberto, I can't see people when they raise their hands. Sure. So uh, there are no hands up right now, but I just a courtesy reminder for those participating by phone. Um, if you don't have a readily available mute function on your phone, you can press star six and the program will automatically mute you to unmute you. Um, and you can also press star nine to put your hand up if you're calling in. Um, and star nine to lower your hand if your question is answered. But uh, I just did a quick review and it does not look like there are any hands up at the moment. You can also press star nine to put your hand up if you're calling in. Our next. Star nine to lower your hand if your question is Hang on one second. Our next order of business is the regional safe keep, um, excuse me, the local declaration of emergency. Yes, Madam Chair. Um, if you'd like, I'll just give you a brief kind of summary of our thinking on that. Um, and we were provided this template language from Copeland and Page, which is town council. Um, they advised um, action by both the Board of Health and by the select board. The Board of Health acted favorably on a very similar language um, on Thursday evening. And we're asking the select board to similarly uh, act on this. And the, the reason is uh, um, it, it's actually threefold. Um, the, the first is that doing so gives us the authority, if necessary, to expend municipal appropriations into deficit. Um, we do not necessarily have any um, known area where that's going to happen, but it gives us the authority to do so in the interest of providing emergency services. Um, the second thing that it does is that it will um, help shore up our position to qualify for potential assistance either at the state or federal level should that money become available down the road. Um, so we're, we're asking for the action in that fashion as well. And the third is obviously um, for, the, for the importance for our community to understand that, um, you know, in addition to the actions that we've taken here that largely involve municipal facilities and that are under the control of the administration or other town departments, um, you know, that it's an important um, signal to the community that, you know, that we're, we also believe that, you know, the community needs to view it that way as well. So that was sort of the reason for those three things. Two of them are very much practical and legal reasons. And the third is, I think, I don't want to say it's symbolic. It's more than that. Um, but it sort of you know, makes that representation as a whole that, that the board is on board with uh, the approach. Um, and so we've, you know, provided a motion 
um, for uh, the resolution, excuse me, the declaration to be approved and signed. Um, you're not able to physically sign it where you're at, obviously, but um, the motion will suffice for now. Do I have a motion, Mrs. Gonzalez? Oh, we have to unmute her. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Sorry, Leanne, we'll find you. <laughs> She's the last on the last. Um, she last. Oh, there she is. Yep. Hmm. Hold on. Sorry, Leanne, we'll find you. I'm not showing enough. Unmute option. I just unmuted myself. Here we go. I just unmuted myself. Great. <laughs> All right. Do I have a motion, no. Ms. Gonzalez? Don't tell my husband there's a mute button for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Madam Chair, I move to approve and sign the attached declaration of emergency. Madam Chair, I second. I have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Um, any discussion on the motion? Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Um, any discussion on the motion? Mr. Mr. Schultz? Thinks, I think he needs to unmute too. Yeah, I'm not able to unmute Mr. Schultz. Star six, and he can unmute. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, can you unmute your phone? There we go. Just texted me that he he uh, he votes yes. He's having a glitch. He's going to have to re-log in. <laughs> okay, and then the chair, chair votes aye. So that's approved. Um, Mr. O'Leary, would you please take the chair for the next order of business? I'm going to ask the members to allow me to recuse myself um, because I have a family member who serves as the sheriff's chief of staff and chief financial officer. My sister Bridget is this the uh, chief of staff and CFO for Sheriff Petusian, and although there isn't a, a financial interest, at play, I asked to recuse myself um, to avoid any issues involved in the agreement. Well, Madam Chair, um, so next order of business is the um, Regional Safekeeping Holding Facility Agreement. Uh, Mr. Gilberto, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Vice Chair. This is uh, this is an agreement that has been developed over the past few months and is now ready for approval. Um, it certainly is timely given um, the situation that we find ourselves in uh, now. Uh, the agreement provides for the Middlesex County Sheriff to house North Reading Police Department arrestees at night and during the weekend, which reduces our need to supervise prisoners at the police station when the court is closed. Um, this would greatly assist during the COVID-19 emergency since um, at this point, the um, the uh, are in fact largely closed with regard to um, many, many cases. Um, so this is something, again, it's timely. It's something that we happen to have been working on and it's something that's been made available to us from the sheriff and uh, requires ratification by the board um, so that we can uh, formally enter the program and we ask the board to approve and to vote to sign it. Mr. Gilberto, this, this goes just beyond this, but I mean, basically what this does is this allows for, part of it is to allow our community or our police department to place uh, prisoners with the Middlesex County Sheriff's Department and then actually free up instead of having someone sitting with a, a prisoner? That's correct, yes. Continue to have uh, more police on the street here in North Reading. So it's a, it's a, good, it's a good idea. Uh, that's, that's correct, right? Free that's up our right. officers? That's correct. We, we are currently required to, you know, to meet the standard to uh, accompany somebody when they are in the lockup facility and uh, our ability um, this will address the points in time where that 
can be longer period, you know, whether it's a weekend or otherwise. And now, of course, the situation that we find ourselves in now, um, it allows us to either avoid having to tie up an officer or avoid having to call in a, a matron uh, to, uh, excuse me, it doesn't, it doesn't address the matron situation because it doesn't address female prisoners, but it does um, address largely our need to call in somebody additional um, when there's a facility. Um, my understanding is a separate population um, at the Middlesex County Jail uh, where individuals would be held. Huh, huh. Thank you. Do uh, board members have any questions or comment? If, if not, uh, Mrs. Gonzalez, do you have a motion? I do. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to approve and sign the Regional Safekeeper Holding Agreement with the Middlesex County Sheriff. Second. Is there a second? A second by Mr. Schultz. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, let's see. Uh, Mr. Schultz, I vote. You vote. Aye. Mr. Oh, Dallas. Oh. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Uh, Madam Chair is abstaining, and uh, Mr. O'Leary will vote aye. Aye. Madam Chair, you have the gavel back. Okay. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Our next order of business are the minutes of the um, March. The minutes of the March 9th regular session and in terms of the executive session, I'm going to ask the board to at least table that portion of, of um, this discussion. There were some um, additional items I wanted to send to Jane, but I did not have the opportunity to do that yet. Um, so, and the minutes were in the packet. The minutes for the meetings were in the packet for the members. Do I have a motion? <clears throat> Madam Chair, I move to approve the March 9, 2020 regular session minutes as written. I have, a, I have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and I have a second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. O'Leary, uh, any discussion? Mr. O'Leary? Aye. Mr. Walner? Aye. Mr. Schultz? Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez? Aye. And I, the chair votes aye. Uh, ask the members to just pass over executive session again. Um, next. Madam Chair, um, we do have uh, public comment and board member reports on the agenda. I don't know if we're holding them for later in the meeting or. Oh my goodness, I skipped right over that. I apologize. Uh, that was number five, yes. <laughs> Number five and number six, we went right over that. I'm sorry. All right, so public comment. Is there anyone here that wishes to speak? Michael, I can't see it, so you'd have to see it. All right, bear with me. All right, so public comment. Is there anyone I'm not seeing a, uh, a hand up, so it looks like we do not. I have a hand up. Oh, there's Ms. Gonzalez. <laughs> Well, we're going to move on to board member reports, Mrs. Gonzalez. Is that okay? That's fine. And you can um, have all the time you'd like to comment during okay. board member reports. I mean, within reason, right? All right. So let's <laughs> let's let's go down the line. Do you want to speak first, Mrs. Gonzalez, or do you want us to go in the order that we typically go? That's fine. We can go in the order. All right. So we'll hear from Mr. O'Leary. No, I think I've made my comments uh, earlier. So thank you very much, Madam Chair. Okay. Mr. Walner. You have, you have, okay, you're on mute. Just briefly, I had a chance to, uh, um, I got invited to the Forest Committee and I had a chance to take a tour of Swan Pond Forest to see all that's out there and what that group is doing. And it's good effort. So I've, um, come back to Mike Roberto to ask for some assistance in helping them do a little bit more clear cutting, but I have to learn more about it. And after things that we'll have a chance to discuss that, but it was really interesting. I'd never been to Swan Pond before and it's a beautiful forest. And when you walk around, it's incredible how, what a beautiful area that is. And so, and I did the same thing while I was out there. I did the uh, Swan Pond Road Drive. So I have a really good feel now for what that's like and why they need paving and what that's all about. So um, it was just a good uh, little field trip. Um, and I was also proud to see that um, the CIT, SSAT group and the COA group uh, all jumped in 
to do that in this together, 01864. Um, you know, it's just nice to see some of the people I used to be on a committee with just jumped in and helped make that come together instantly. So, anyways, that's all I have. Thank you. Right. Mr. Schultz. Mr. Yes, sir, a couple of things. Uh, I want to echo uh, this many telling Mr. O'Leary's comments on how great the administration has done handling the situation so far. It's certainly unprecedented we've never dealt with something like this as a town uh, i also want to take a special moment to thank uh, representative jones i probably have spoken to him probably a dozen times in the past week and he's always been there been very attentive to our town's needs and we're lucky to have him as our state rep also um i did have an opportunity to attend the well, to attend the board of health meeting last week and as the town knows, there are another range of businesses that were further closed due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Also, I want to mention that I did speak with uh, Bob Bracey, our director today, and he indicated that he has sent town, uh, guidance to townwide to schools, chamber of commerce, business and food establishments, is working with the senior population. Basically, if anyone to work with, he's been working with them. And lastly, selfishly, she's going to get mad that I'm saying this publicly, but I happened to be in the park walking the dog early Saturday morning a couple of weeks ago, and Rita Mullen, who does more for this town that people don't know about, was over here at 7 in the morning clearing brush around the parks and railer, and literally was working like a landscaper all weekend over there all by herself. I just want to publicly recognize her for everything she does for the town as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Ms. Gonzalez. Um, I just wanted to address the horrible tragedy we had happened this week. Um, one of our citizens was um, killed in a, by a car um, on 28. Um, Marianne Swam. I just wanted to send my condolences to family, friends, the Stop and Shop employee family that she had. Um, I happened to have known her personally, worked with her um, years ago and um, had her as a client. So I just wanted to send out my, my deepest condolences to her family and friends. And thank the first responders also. Thank you, Mrs. Gonzalez. It was a tragedy. And in the midst of all the things that we're going through, we have first responders who responded to back to back, uh, pretty significant um, car car incidents here so um can i just add to that for one quick second my wife last night posted on the north running connection um she's encouraging people um to speak to the stop and shop employees and just to express your um you know your condolences they really um she you can see what she wrote she wrote it much better than i did but um, it was just encouraging people to reach out and just, you know, because that was a huge loss for them. And uh, when she's done that, they responded very favorably. So I'm encouraging, if you have any connection at all with Stop and Shop, be sure to reach out to the workers because it's a tough time anyways and add this on. I mean, it was just a shock to them all. And they, they've all appreciated it very much. So it's a safe thing to do. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walner. I just want to add a couple more things. I reached out to the superintendent and the uh, chair of the school committee. They are actually having their meeting this evening, so I imagine a lot of the residents are attending their meeting. Um, we had, um, I just asked if there was anything that they wanted me to convey, and they just conveyed that their meetings tonight, and they'll be continuing to communicate updates to the community. There's really nothing for them definitively to report about extending the closure yet or the senior activities or sports. I specifically asked for those because that's what I'm hearing from residents wanting to know, particularly about the seniors. Um, but we also do want to say we'll make plan we'll make a plan for all of these things and they will have a plan for all of these things. They are being guided right now by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education and what they're doing. They're having regular meetings, um, emergency meetings and regular meetings to determine what type of structure they're going to be putting in place for some learning opportunities. And I'm sure we'll hear from them. We're getting, as parents, some of us as parents in the school system, I think we're getting regular updates from them. And then it's a good opportunity in a moment to also thank our teachers in our, our district, because even though there's nothing formally set up for it's sort of online um, programs at the moment, 
the teachers are still reaching out to our students to keep them engaged. To our, they're sending emails and trying to get the get the kids to stay engaged, and that's a, quite helpful. Um, second, um, I reached out to Lisa Egan from the Chamber of Commerce to ask her if there was anything she might want me to share from the business community. And she has encouraged people to visit the Chamber's website. It's uh, Reading, Reading, R, R E A D I N G N R E A D I N G C H A M B E R dot org. There are resources and information there, not just for uh, residents um, to see what we can do to help keep those businesses going. Some of it's obvious, but also resources for the business community with these um, loan programs and um, information about what the government has been doing to assist businesses as they weather this crisis as well. Um, I also want to reach out to say thank you to Danielle Masterson because in the, in the library because they've been regularly utilizing social media to let people know what's available to them right now. And Danielle's been doing live Facebook sessions for the kids and her next one's tomorrow at 1030. So go visit the Flint Library to check that out. And if you have kids that are interested in that, that's an event for them to do. Um, and everyone has mentioned the in in this together 01864. Thanks to Christine Pecora and, and Rachel Fisher and these other resident volunteers. They have a Facebook page for people to go to. You can join it. You can become a volunteer for them. You can reach out if you need help. They're a citizen group of volunteers, and they match up a person that needs something with a person who would like to help someone in the community. And this is where we see, again, our, our leaders and our committed volunteers rise. And the other um, people that we should make the town aware of is the food pantry. Um, Alan has reached out across social platforms as well to get the message out there to let people know if you need food. And even she has even reached out to let people know if you need emergency funds right now. There are a lot of people that have lost their jobs and they're in need to have some emergency funds to get them um, over the next up th this time frame, so she said to reach out to the food pantry for the for that help. And then finally, on the town website is updated information, and particular citizens might be wondering about their their bills. Um, the town extended the deadline for the payment of water and trash and motor vehicle excise payments to April sixth. It'll have no additional payment, and that's actually good for me because somewhere in the piles of my paper is my excise. So, so um, again, to thank thank the um, thank everybody that's been helping us through this. We're getting a lot of the information, and we're getting a lot of the updates in real time. And um, it's important for people to stay connected with one another now more than ever. And we have the ability, even though we're all you know, on our own and either isolated or quarantined or staying at home for containment purposes. We're really lucky to be in this community that's able to keep people connected in this way. And my, I can see you raising your hand, Mr. Schultz. Mr. Schultz. And just a couple of things I was neglectful to say. is I also want to give a special um, thank you to Pam Bath, our public health nurse, and also Stephanie Connolly, who is Bob Racy's new secretary, who are both doing a bang-up job during this crisis. I was remiss. I forgot to mention their names earlier. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. O'Leary. Yeah, one other thing that I forgot to mention, and you, you touched on it, is that locally uh, we have you know, a significant number of uh, restaurants uh, who are continuing to operate with a uh, skeleton crew to uh, allow for takeout. So I would encourage uh, people to support the local businesses uh, as much as possible by you know, you know, keeping their social distances. But, you know, uh, they employ an awful lot of people here in this community and they have a lot of inventory left and uh, that they need to get rid of before it spoils. And it's just uh, it's a good thing if you just need to get a good meal 
uh, get something, you know, the uh, local establishments, most of them are still open on a temporary basis uh, for takeout service. So uh, I encourage people to uh, to support them. Thank you. All right. So now we're moving on to, I see no other hands. So we're moving on to the seasonal license renewal that was in the packet for Hillview Snacks, Thompson Country Club Grill, and Thompson Country Club Pro Shop. Mr. Gilberto? Yep, yeah, that, that's it. Those are all, um, at this point, fairly routine renewals um, for those uh, two locations, uh, two of the licenses being at Thompson Country Club. And uh, we provided departmental reports. Um, no, no, uh, no, no issues of significance, and they're ready to be renewed. Mr. Gilberto, I did notice in the packet, though, that the reports for each of those, they're requiring fingerprinting that hasn't been done and health inspection, which how would, is that to be taken care of? So that'll be worked out to the extent it's required, given the changes in the functions that some of those places are able to, to, um, to offer at this point. When I say functions, the operations that they're able to do. But uh, they must meet all the requirements before we'll actually issue the license to them um, uh, to, to operate. And I know in the case of at least one, they will not be operating anytime soon. So do, it just as about I think the uh, I think the motions just reflect all of them that you know subject to all regulatory department requirements. So I think that covers whatever outstanding issues they may be. Uh, so we can act on it and then. Uh, this the administrator said would uh, they hold the license until they meet the departmental requirements. <laughs> so do I have a motion, Mrs. Gonzalez? <clears throat> yes. Um, Madam Chair, I move to renew the seasonal club wine and malt beverages license for Thompson Club Incorporated DBA Pro Shop to a mid iron drive to expire October 31st, 2020, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Mr. O'Leary. Oh, all set. Thank you. Oh, aye. <laughs> Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And aye. And do I have a motion next quarter? Thompson Club, Inc., BBA, TCC Grill, Seasonal Club, all aye. Madam Chair, I move to renew the seasonal club all alcohol license for Thompson Club Incorporated, DBA, TCC Grill, to Mid Iron Drive, expired December 31st, 2020, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Second. I have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez? Aye. Aye. Next. License is Thompson Club Inc. DBA TCC Grill Common Victuals. Madam Chair, I move to grant a common victual license for Thomas Thompson Club Incorporated DBA TCC Grill to Mid Iron Drive to expire December 31st, 2020. Subject to all regulatory department requirements. Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. We lost Mr. Schultz. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And I. And the next license, Golf Facilities Management Inc.'s Common Victualers License. <clears throat> Madam Chair, I move to renew the Common Victualer License for Golf Facilities Management Incorporated, DBA Hillview Snack Bar, to expire December 31st, 2020, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Second. Motion by Mrs. Gonzalez, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. 
Motion by Mrs. Gonzalez, Aye. second by Mr. O'Leary. Next order of business is Mr. Golf Aye. Facilities Management, Inc., Mr. Wine. Seasonal Wine and Malt Mr. Beverages. Mrs. Gonzalez. Madam Chair, I move to renew the Seasonal Aye. Wine and Malt Beverages license Next for Golf Facilities Management, Aye. Incorporated, DBA and Hillview Snack Bar to expire October 31st, 2020, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Second. I have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Seeing no hands, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And I vote aye. We have a transient vendor license for Robert Connors for the sale of flowers and Christmas trees and etc. at 226 Main Street. Ms. Gonzalez, do I have a vendor license for Robert Connors? Madam Chair, I need to renew the transient vendor license for the sale of flowers, Christmas trees, etc. at 226 Main Street for Robert Connors. 58 Wyman Street, River Mass, to expire December 31st, 2020, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Second. I have a motion and a second. I'm going to assume the et cetera is a flowers. And, um, and um, we're going to, any discussion? Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And I. Next is uh, to sign the ABC seasonal renewal certification. Mrs. Gonzalez. Since that's where we're renewed. Mrs. Gonzalez, do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to sign the ABC 2020 seasonal renewal certification. Second. I have a motion. And a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walter. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. I have a motion. Aye. Aye. Any discussion? The next order of business is the an appointment to the Board of Registrars. It was in the packet. Um, does anyone have any questions about that? It's to it's an it's an appointment of Hugo, Hugo Wilberg III. An appointment to the. Could I just say that it's not Wilberg, it's Wyberg. There's no L. Um, I'm sorry. That's a. That's no, it's written that way, but it's. <laughs> Wilberg, the third. I, I don't think it was written that way in the packet. I'm sorry. I see it. All. Yeah. But it is here. Yeah. In the motion, it is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. All right. Any discussion? Uh, do I have a motion? Um, I'm sorry. I see it. Okay. Okay. All right. Any discussion? Madam Chair, I move to appoint the following individual to the Board of Registrars for a term to expire April 1st, 2023. Hugo Weiberg, the third. Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Just uh, again, this is uh, somewhat routine in that uh, there's going to be a vacancy. And again, we'd like to uh, to, to thank uh, who previously served on the uh, Board of Registrars, Ms. Jenny, who served for a number of years as the uh, Republican Town Committee representative on the uh, Board of Registrars, uh, Joyce Jenny. And uh, Mr. Weiberg has been unanimously recommended by the Republican Town Committee to the uh, board for uh, nomination and uh, selection. So um, with that, I would endorse it. And I think that's good. Thank you for stepping forward. But again, thank Joyce Jenny for her service also. So I have a motion and a second. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And I vote aye. Mrs. Gonzalez, on that um, form that you signed for the appointment, just you might want to just make sure that is actually. Mrs. Gonzalez. I crossed out the L. Could I just rewrite the name? Mrs. Gonzalez, on that. That's fine. 
form that you might give you a new one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So just be with me, folks. We have um, agenda item number 10, which is a special town meeting on seven acres poultry farm, an update with mm -hmm. regard to that. Mr. Uh, Gilbert, uh, just a, a brief introduction and, and some background with regard to both item 10 and item 11 concerning the June town meeting. Um, you know, there are, there are a number of things going on um, at the state house with regard to town meetings and town elections. And I expect that a lot of the, um, the answers on these things of what options are available to us will be worked out between now and the board's next regular meeting um, in, uh, in April. Um, so, you know, I think there's a lot of questions about, you know, some of the timing of some of these events and when they are occurring and is it, are we going to be able to have them? And I, I think that, you know, there'll be a need for the board to provide guidance on that um, at its next meeting, but um, there's some work to be done on, on Beacon Hill that Representative Jones and Senator Tarr are both working hard on. on behalf. Um, with regard specifically to the special town meeting, um, we have been doing our due diligence in terms of the environmental and the engineering work. Um, our ability to do some of those things is getting a little bit hindered by virtue of some of the restrictions that are out there, but nonetheless, there has been quite the progress that's been made, and we're hopeful to have final reports or perhaps final reports with some things that might need to be accepted because we're not able to um, um, uh, uh, complete the review due to closures or restrictions or otherwise. But that work is continuing to move forward. Um, obviously, this is a situation where we have a particular special town meeting date that's been set. And then there are some, um, obviously, restrictions that are out there that might make such a town meeting um, difficult. So I've been in constant communication with Representative Jones, and I expect that we'll have more to report with regard to all of that um, at the board's next meeting. Are there any questions? Uh, and if not, I have an update with regard to the June town yeah, meeting. Just, just in relation to the to the special town meeting, uh, obviously we're under the under the gun from uh, statutory timelines. Uh, I mean, are they contemplating it? Your, your discussions with the representative Jones and Senator Tarr contemplating uh, relaxing the 120 day requirements, or uh, I don't even know if that's possible. It is. It is oh, I can answer that. Uh, because of um, there is active special legislation pending that amongst other um, deadlines, that deadline is under consideration for extension. And it reads, at least the version that I saw earlier today reads that it's until the emergency is lifted in 45 days thereafter. So there are a number of permitting um, deadlines, including the 61A, um, 120 day deadline that would be extended if that passed. As of prior to this meeting, it had not yet passed, so it was still under consideration. But they're trying to help cities and towns address these sort of granted unless acted upon deadlines, and that's one of them. I have not seen that it was passed yet, and I I don't think Mr. Goberto, I don't know if you've seen anything come across. Mr. Schultz has actually been in regular contact too with Representative Jones. So, Mr. Schultz? And I know, uh, Steve, they were actually, uh, that was one of the things they had at the State House today, was that particular issue with all these, I call it the, the loose ends of all these different uh, town deadlines. So they were dealing with town elections, town meetings, but also other legislation to deal with, again, for lack of a better term, the loose ends. Such as things like a turkey farm, and they were that was being dealt with today. I don't think it's been signed yet, but I know from Brad that they are working. Thank you. One of the ones they did ex allow towns to extend the deadline on was elections, municipal elections, which means we would have Mr. Schultz for a little bit of extra time, and that's what we ended up doing. So. Um, so, but I, I've been trying to keep um, Mr. Gilberto updated as I get these things in. Senator Tyre's office has been fantastic about providing the updates with us to watch right away as they're as they're issued. And 
So we'll keep everybody posted on that and how we may need to proceed with those deadlines, but it certainly would give us a little bit of relief because it's tough to hold the public comment and public hearings like this. So anything to add to that, Mr. Gilberto? Is there anything else you wanted to comment? Not at this time other than... Um, <laughs> Mr. Gilberto, do you think you could mute everyone? I can't hear you, but yeah. I can hear someone else in the background there. Sure. Oh, sounds like the issue might have gone away. <laughs> That's can you good. hear me now? Yes, yes. Great. Right. So I'll move to the June town meeting and the list of Warren articles in particular. Perfect. Um, I'm not going to read the first um, 19 or so regular routine articles that we do every year. I'm going to start with the ones that are um, unique to this town meeting or are not always on the warrant. It's okay? Yes, of course. Um, so we have an article on there to fund town building repairs, which we do uh, frequently have on the warrant. An article to appropriate funds for special counsel legal expenses if necessary. An article that would establish a fund or account for historical buildings, and that was a result of a meeting that Mrs. Gonzalez and Mr. O'Leary and I had with some folks at the um, Minute Militia. Um, the potential adoption of Mass General Law Chapter 33, Section 59, which would address the compensation of current employees of the town, current employees of the town who are active in the National Guard um, when they are called to train. Uh, an article submitted, I should say three articles that I believe have been, been submitted by the school committee that relate to the lease of land and rooftop space for uh, solar photovoltaic facilities at the middle high school. Um, authorization to um, get into a purchase agreement for electric electricity supply. And then um, an authorization for potential agreement for payments in lieu of taxes um, that might be associated with that. And then, so that that's something that the school committee has been working on with town council. I think I mentioned at the last meeting that I've been asked to facilitate those interactions and they are underway. Um, but, you know, on, it looks like these articles um, you know, may be on our um, draft form, um, as well as one to establish a school rental revolving account um, for the school committee as well. And then the last two, one is from the assessors to fund the fiscal year 2021 revaluation. And then uh, um, the final article is to fund the 28 Main Street study and redesign, which is submitted by the Planning Commission. And that would be in advance of a potential um, project that we would request funding from the um, state and federal transportation improvement program. Um, so I don't have the dollar amounts on all those at this point, and I don't have the language, but we did receive the, um, the, uh, the uh, I, I wanted to start at least with the uh, so that you're aware of what's in the queue um, and underway. And I think for some of the board members, you're aware that these have been working in the background, and now you see we've tried to capture everything on that list. Warrant won't be signed by the board until May, so the board certainly has an opportunity to continue to modify that warrant as we go through the process. Do the members have any questions? Seeing no, we'll move on to the next order of business. <laughs> I'm, I'm, report. Um, I, you might have a I'm sorry about this. I'm trying to scroll up and down, but you're. The, I can see everybody in place of my nose. So, um, just sorry. a couple of yeah, things. I just want to. Uh, I, I appreciate the kind words sorry, that the board members offered at the beginning of the meeting. Um, I, I do want to thank all of the town's employees, not only those who are directly involved in the town's response with regard to. Um, this pandemic, but also um, employees who might not be directly involved, but who have been dramatically impacted by both the way we do business here, um, the evolving situation, uh, the evolving, evolving nature of the situation, and, and, and the, uh, the fact that uh, decisions that we've made in one area have had to change and go in a different direction very quickly thereafter. And everybody has been really flexible, has stepped up, wants to help, wants to contribute. Um, here at the town hall and throughout town government, and, and I just think that 
we, you know, never could we all have been more prouder of them. Um, just a couple of people to, to reference. I know Mr. Bracey was identified. He's been working very hard day and night along with the public safety director. I also want to recognize um, the finance director, Liz, and our information technology director, Matt Cooper, who was actually on this call, I believe, um, and has been monitoring all of our remote meetings. Um, Matt is basically the backbone of trying to take 300 years of doing things by paper-based and in-person and convert it to online and by phone in a matter of seven days. So I just want to thank him for his hard work. Thank God you. about Matt. How can we forget about Matt? <laughs> thank you, Matt. <laughs> All right, so our next order of business, and it, it may seem a little bit odd that we're doing this, but we were in the midst of budget hearings before the COVID-19 crisis erupted. And so we have to continue and finish our, we have to finish our budget hearings. We have several department budgets that we need to review. These um, updates or... Yes, I'm sorry. Did you, I, come back I, I apologize. Did I not let you can finish your comments? No, I just I didn't know if you wanted to come back to old and new business and the discussion of the routine agenda items for future meetings. If that's the intent, that's fine. I just didn't know if that was. Did I skip over that? See, I'm way down to the to the budget. <laughs> the finance committee appreciates. Father Ross. Sorry. Hold on. Let me get back to that. All right. So. Old and new business. What's next, Mr. Gilberto? Yes, old and new business, Madam Chair. Uh, lost in my lost in my packet now. We've got um, sorry about that. Old and new business. Do the members have anything else they want to add? <laughs> I just lost you all. Nothing yeah. else. Nothing else, Madam Chair. Right now, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Hang on, I've lost you people. Hold on. There we are. Quick one, Everybody all said I'm sorry. Mr. Mr. Walner. It's it Andy's out. Mr. Schultz. Um, just real quick, I want to give a shout out to the class of 2020, um, the, the graduating seniors this year that have really had their senior year, which should be the happiest time in their life, really. Their, their plans have obviously been changed. Um, you know, they just, they just spring sports, they miss the plays, all the activities that they, they're involved in. And we are, as a town, thinking of you guys. This is the generation of kids, this particular class. I have a son who's a senior. They were born time of 9 11 and they're graduating during this pandemic. And um, we just, we're really thinking you guys, I know, think, you know there's things down the road that we're not sure if and when they're going to happen. And I know the school committee is going to do the best job to try to make things as back to normal as they possibly can. But I just, you know, I am, we, I do feel for these kids that are graduating this year and are missing out on a lot of stuff right now. But it's, the spring of their senior year should be a fun time for them. And obviously it's not. So I just wanted to mention them and they're on our thoughts as well. Thank you. Okay. Mr. O'Leary? Yep. Uh, well, I'll said, uh, echo Mr. Schultz's comments about the class of 2020. So it's unfortunate. But uh, we are thinking of them and we hope that things move along quickly so they'll be able to celebrate a little bit later on. Nothing else. Thank you. Mr. Walmer? Mr. Schultz, was there anything else? No, that's all. Mrs. Gonzalez? No. Yeah. And uh, I'd, I'd like to echo Mr. Schultz, I too have a senior, so it's been kind of an interesting turn of events for them, but we will not let their celebrations be missed. And I think if we can see anything that's resulted from this with the members of the community, people are just getting together, not physically, but in um, other ways to make things happen for other people. And we won't let this time pass by without letting them have their sort of rites of passage as they see me. Or my son was even asking about the graduation ceremony. We'll get there, we'll have those things. I have no doubt about that. We will make those things happen for our students. It's, a, it's important that they be able to go through these things that everyone else has had the opportunity to go through. We'll get to the other side of the crisis. Um, and um, I think that now we are ready to move on, right? Anybody else? That's good. And we have a number of members I can see now on the from the finance team that have joined us for the remaining um, the remaining budget hearings. 
what we did was incorporate into the packet for the board um, some summations. We've already got the binder at the beginning of the budget hearings, and we've got some summations. So we we don't have the ability to have each of the directors of these departments come and speak to us. So what we did in advance for those members that are listening or for those individuals that are listening is we reviewed the packet in advance. And if any of the individual members had a question with respect to what was being presented, then, then Mr. they were to send it to Mr. Gilberto, who was then going to ask the um, individual department head for more clarification. I don't know, I, Mr. Gilberto, you can answer me to whether or not anyone had any further questions about the information. And if not, if you want to just do a run through and then we would give finance committee members an opportunity to to ask questions again just by putting your raising your hand up and michael will recognize you sure so madam chair i did not receive any questions uh, and, and if anyone sent one and didn't get an acknowledgement from me it's because i didn't see it but i, I did try to track through my email and i, I didn't receive anything uh, i did ask the department heads to take um, to make an attempt to put into writing what they would have said if they were presenting in front of you in room 14 at the town hall. Um, I, I believe I have the department heads mostly on this call, and, and if it's okay with you, Madam Chair, what I, what I might do is just ask them to go through, you know, just to give a couple of minute summary, two minutes if possible, of, of what their what their what changes are in their requests, and, and I do. Um, my thought is maybe we go just by department in order and then circle back to each member and finance committee member with any questions that they might have. Perfect. That's, that works great. great. Take it away. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, Mary Prenny, are you uh, on at this point? Let's see. All right. How about uh, I saw Karen Mulberg was on. Uh, Karen, so if, you, you well? don't, if you don't mind, if, if we can just quickly run through. If you, we did have a summary sheet. So, are you yep. going to come back to Mrs. Prenny, or do you want to just run through? Yeah, no, I would, come, I would come back to her. I just wanted oh. to make sure that anyone who was on the call the opportunity to maybe just summarize in their own words rather than me trying to do so. All right. Um, uh, Karen Moberg, I see that you're on there, and I believe George Stack might be on as well. Uh, I'm on my Peter Hemi. Oh, hey, Peter. How are you? Uh, hey, Karen, I see you there. <laughs> You want to just give us a quick summary, Peter? Sure. Um, so the the quick summary is that the the budget for next year is uh, very similar to previous year's budget, except for uh, two major things. One, uh, we're looking for an increase in capital spending for this year. A lot of the equipment that we have and we've been using uh, is starting to get really old in the tooth, 20, 20, 25 years old, and we need to make an investment to get that uh, capital equipment back up to speed. The other uh, investment uh, that we're making or that the incremental spending is from the contractual increases that uh, GFMI is getting as part of their contract in order to run the facilities. Uh, those two increases are offset by some uh, small reduction in the debt service for next year. As always, you know, given these strange times that we're having uh, now and hopefully not in the future, we'll continue to monitor uh, the inflows of cash and adjust our spending as needed uh, during the year. And um, Mr. Hemi, um, my understanding is that at this point, the performance of the, the enterprise does not support um, funding for payment in lieu of taxes for the year 2021. Is that correct? That, that's correct. So your, your budget request does not consider that? Does not to consider. We need to make a further investment in equipment to maintain the course to the extent that it is today. Okay. Madam Chair, if it's okay, I'll, I'll go through to the next department and then we'll come back and go to the members for questions. Does that sound good or do you want to do each? each Let's do questions oh. as we get. To Michael, I'm back on just in case anyone's listening. It's Mary. Okay, we'll come right back to you, Mary. Let's go through and see if um, members of the to, to the members of the of the board uh, the select board have any questions. And I did see Mr. O'Leary's hand raised. It's more of a comment, Madam Chair, and I, I tend to uh, 
say the same thing every year in relation to the Hillview Enterprise. I think it's important for uh, the board, the finance committee, and the community to recognize, you know, what Hillview has provided for this community over the years, and that I don't believe, and I never believe, that uh, we should, meaning the, the board, the finance committee, or the town administrator, anticipate or expect the payment of little taxes from Hillview. I have to understand that Hillview, uh, first and foremost, has to operate as a business and maintain uh, the cost, maintain uh, its viability. And in return, you know, we have uh, received such things as Ipswich, Ipswich River Park, um, uh, high school football fields, uh, acquisition of other, other properties. And uh, in order for us to continue to facilitate that and to meet the mission of the commission as commission and the enterprise that was originally established, you know, resources from the enterprise should never be there and available to offset general operating expenses for general government. It wasn't designed for that. It should never be anticipated that we should get it. And I don't think, I think we should get it out of our head that uh, at some point that they should be you know, paying, um, making payments a little tax. We have other projects that are always on the drawing board um, that may be appropriate for Hillview to uh, take under the enterprise, uh, save the taxpayers money. If you keep in mind, you know, Exeter River Park hasn't cost the town an operating 10 cents. The football field hasn't cost the taxpayers 10 cents. It's because we've been able to maintain this uh, barrier whereby the expectations for a payment of the taxes should never be there. And I think it's important to be said and repeated every year at this particular time. So I'm doing it again. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, any of the other, Miss Miss, any of the other? I'm just going to run down everyone, just to, to everyone's name, just so I can make sure. Mr. Walner, uh, no questions. Mr. Schultz, nothing to add. Mrs. Gonzalez, I'm just going to run down. No, I I appreciate the clarification on that. Um, I, Mr. Hermy, I do have a quick question for you. Actually, sure. two two questions for you. <laughs> Um, what's the termination date of the current of the contracts with the current vendor there? What which contracts are you talking about for the golf course or for the banquet facility? The banquet facility. Uh, the banquet facility he signed up for a five year with a five year option. So we are I believe in year three. Um, I don't have the files in front of me. But I believe that there's, there's roughly one more full yeah. year between now and March 31st, 2021. The, uh, it also is important to note that both the town and the, uh, the contractor has a 90, uh, has a nine months out if they choose to elect it. The, uh, so the revenues you derive, the revenues that the commission's deriving. Do you have a, an amount of revenues the commission's deriving from that contract from the? Vendor? So we, we we get very little money from them directly. Uh, we get rent and reimbursement for some utilities. So the rent is roughly uh, three thousand dollars a month, so thirty six thousand, and they also are covering the uh, utilities that they are using. So it's a, as a percentage of our total revenue, it's a very small amount. Okay. Was there, um, I don't remember the contract specifically, and I haven't looked at it for a long time to my knowledge, and as far as back as I can remember, was that tied to the revenues that the vendor brought in from the uh, rent functions and rentals? So we, we do get a percentage of any of his functions that he does have. So, you know, those have been running two to three thousand uh, dollars, you know, per month on average, you know, to the extent that he does have um, uh, bereavement or use of the banquet facility. So we do get a percentage of that, but it's a, it's a very small percentage. So um, what what's the percentage tied to that? Um, the percentage, I believe, is 8% of his revenue, which is a small, small number. So we, as I said, we get, we get about 36,000 in rent and we get about another 20,000 
in our portion of his facility. So roughly 50000 a year we get from that facility. And I, I just, I know this is diff, a little different than budget related, but I think a couple of times that we've had, heard from people who are having functions for the town, they've actually had to go elsewhere. One mo most recently was the veterans had to go to Tewksbury because it was too costly for them to hold the event at the Hillview, which is, you know, although we don't see uh, payment in lieu of, or we see other things from the town, it, it, it just seems to be uh, odd that our own um, facilities and our own people have to leave when we have that beautiful facility to hold functions. Was there anything in that contract that um, addressed the availability for, you know, residents or, or, you know, town functions, town sponsored functions, such as the veterans um, luncheon? Sure. Uh, there is nothing in the contract on that. You know, he is, he is a contractor that is renting the facility from us. He certainly has to be competitive in the market, you know, for his own sake. But we have no say in what he charges or, you know, how much he charges. Um, you know, we, we have heard it also from some golf outings, which have chosen to go other places uh, for their meal instead of going to uh, the Hillview. Um, again, you know, when you start getting into um, that facility, you know, and managing that facility is a very difficult task. We've had a number of uh, seasoned restaurateurs who have taken over that facility. It's very difficult uh, to run and make money in that facility. Remember, you presenting that information to us. I just think it's something for the commission to consider when they do go out to bid again when this contract comes up, um, or sooner yeah. if, if if need be. Yeah, we and we would love to have that. Unfortunately, we have not had the um, <laughs> the nicety of having multiple bids and being able to negotiate. Uh, we've had, unfortunately, only one person each time that's come to the forefront and interested in, in renting the facility. I don't have anything further. Do any members of the finance? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see that. Mrs. Gonzalez. I'm just curious how the downstairs comes into this. Is this downstairs? I remember years ago we would go there. It was like a little restaurant. Um, is that being run at all? No. Uh, the downstairs is not being run as a restaurant. Uh, it is not feasible to be run as a restaurant. Both the current occupant and the previous one um, tried to make a go of it. And to be honest with you, the town did not support it. Um, so they cannot make money running it as a restaurant. It is being used for small functions, bereavements, um, those type of things. So they cannot make money running it as a restaurant. Mr. Schultz, Mrs. Gonzalez, so you all set? All right. Mrs. Gonzalez? I'm all set, thank you. Mr. Schultz? And a little concern here is that the town didn't support it. Didn't the town put a lot of money into that kitchen the downstairs? The town, we did support it from a uh, Hillview Commission standpoint. We had to upgrade the facility, which we did do. Right. Uh, However, the town I'm referring to is town people. People would not come and eat uh, lunch or dinners at the facility, number one. Number two, the golfers did not support it as well. Well, he was never open, though. I mean, he was open. Absolutely. Uh, was open. He wasn't open on a regular schedule. And he also wasn't open during the time period he was contractually required to be open. So I don't. I think it's a little bit to blame the town. I don't think the operator really gave it a fair shot. So I said that last year. I'll say it again this year. He was supposed to be open when the golf course was open. He was open in June. So, I mean, you know, if he's not going to be open, he's not going to make money. Right. So I want to be fair here. I don't. I think it's unfair to say the town didn't support it. I don't think that the operator gave the town a chance to support it. I know I ate there a number of times. So go to my friends. Okay, and I, you know, unfortunately, I have you know, the history of being on a committee for a while, both not only this operator, but the previous operator who had it open, and he was unable to make money because it was not supported by 
both the town and the um, golfers. Okay. I just think the previous owner, or the previous operator, didn't have the benefit of the new kitchen. So I think we are comparing apples and oranges. But I hear what you're saying. But I don't. I think it's very clear the operator did not really give a full effort in the rest. So I also want to. I also. I just wanted to, um, Mr. Hemi. I, I think I would. I would. I. I do recall reviewing this the past couple of budgets, um, and I. I know we were already aware that that downstairs had been closed by um, the current operator, and we had heard about the other challenges that the previous operator had with that facility but we had also heard about um there was only one person that came forward but we had also heard about other people that had come forward in the bid process that might have wanted to operate one portion of it um, um and i remember we talked about that so maybe in the bid that goes back out that could be split up so mm -hmm. someone were to operate just that and have a pizza business operating out of there and pizza and drinks operating out of there yeah. something like that sure. that that might generate some revenue be a place for people to go in the town for a for a lunch a light lunch or something like that but i i if it's closed now it doesn't seem like there's any um, reason not to look into that now just as a way to generate more um you know more revenue for the town and a vendor maybe someone in the town that wants to, wants to um yeah and well you know i and i hear you um we have not as a commission had anybody approach us about taking over or an interest in running a restaurant in the downtown in the bottom area of the facility um contractually you know we, we couldn't we'd have to negotiate something with the current owner that's there but again you know if someone is interested or if you hear of anybody we would more than welcome them to come in and talk to us and you know see what we can possibly do okay i i know we're on to budget hearing i am um, i think um that if the present owner I um, mean, excuse me, if the present vendor isn't, um, it's, I'm sorry. I'm sharing Richard Johnson's screen, which is lovely, <laughs> Richard Johnson, but I, I can't see the rest of it. I can't see anyone else now, so. I thought that was just yeah. me. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, so I've lost all of you and I can't see you, but Mr. Hemi, if the, if the present vendor just something for you to consider and look back at that contract if the present vendor um stopped the service which we all knew about and because if we couldn't make a go of it maybe that portion then could be put out to bid as not occupied not in use or something like that i don't know but anyway we're going far afield of the budget hearing, and I apologize, but I appreciate that you're here to talk about it and answer the questions. And I do see, I do see, I can see Mr. Kelleher's hand up. Mr. Kelleher? Don, are you there? No. Is there a way we can get I'm off of now. Mr. Get me now. Oh, I can hear you. Yes. Okay. I had to take the mute off. Uh, Mr. Hemi, just a, a very quick question on your your budget. You've got uh, capital requests of two hundred and seventy thousand. Yet the capital request that went into the, the capital improvement planning committee was only two hundred and twenty. Can you update that for Liz so we can get all of the uh, the items that are being requested? Must be another. Yeah, 000, I, I think that. Right, I think there was a little confusion. We're we're requesting two seventy. We're requesting two twenty five of that to be funded from retained earnings. So I think that was the confusion. But we'll we'll get an update to list. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Mm -hmm. um, Herbert. Uh, could somebody ask Richard Wilson to unshare his screen now? Yeah. Okay, we are all viewing Richard Johnson. 
I under I understand that, Mr. Johnson. Can you can you um, can you stop? Stop. There you go. go. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All All right. Thank you, Dan. No questions. I can see. And then is that it, Mrs. Herbert? Yes, that's it. Okay. All right. And I see no other questions from finance. Thank you, Mr. Hemi. Um, okay. Very welcome. Everybody stay safe. You too. You too. Okay. So we'll go back to Mrs. Prenny. Are you still with us? I am. Hey, can, can you hear me now? We can hear you. Can hear definitely. Uh, sorry. I, I was on mute. I apologize for that. Don't worry about so it. I am here now, and um, I'm hoping you all got my written statement. You all had a chance to read the written statement? Yes. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Very ex explicit, explained everything that you are looking for as by way of budget increases. So is there anything in particular? Yes. Well, the in particular, obviously, is increasing my outreach coordinator for hours to a full-time position of 35 hours. Um, that's very important and possibly increasing our program coordinator's hours to uh, 10 more hours. Um, I need a great, as you can see with some of the numbers. Um, we are growing, growing, growing. Um, we need help. And obviously having extra help uh, and staffing would help us do our job better. Ironically, uh, part of my uh, written statement talked about has been, you know, we're bringing in people to our senior center for promoting, you know, getting people out of the house and coming into the senior center for well-being programs and socialization. And at these times, it's just so ironic that uh, this isn't happening. So um, we have a need. Uh, I proved that in some of the numbers that I put in through our Mystic Valley numbers. In FY20, uh, Mystic Valley provided us with $1,869,849 of services, which is almost an increase of 24% over last year. So this increase included everything from home-delivered meals, which I'm happy to say at this moment, at this time, we're still mm -hmm. able to provide seniors our congregate meals, senior management and home care services, Shine programs and about eight more services that they provide for us. And I just want to make it clear that most of those calls start at our senior centers when our staff, when they answer those phone calls coming in. So, does anybody have any questions for me? So, do the members have, select board members have any questions? I see none. How about the members? Oh, I have one. Sorry, Mr. Walner. That's okay. I raised lit my hand late. Just, uh, Mary, you know, the, there is a dramatic increase of seniors coming into town, being in town, growing older. Um, are your services keeping, you know, with your recommendation, are you keeping pace with the activity? Do you feel like you're falling behind? Do you feel like you're getting ahead? How would you characterize it? Uh, we're trying to... Um Stay status quo. So one of the things that we do lack behind because of our outreach coordinator, we try to get our newsletter out more often, which has been delaying because every day when she goes in to try to get the newsletter out, there are more and more calls coming in and more needs that have to be met. So I can see it that things aren't truly being met as we wish they could be met. So are your recommendations a way to cure that problem? Or are, even with the recommendations, are you still falling behind? Uh, well, we have no way to really know that. I mean, obviously, my recommendation is hoping to keep us on par of what we're already doing. Uh, as you can see in some of my notes, especially with the modern landing people, I mean, we have about three more, 300 more units to go there. And we're already getting calls to services, whether it's transportation calls, uh, Mr. Valley calls to learn about our program. You know, we have a one-room senior center that's like 191 years old, and I hope you all got a chance to read about the narrative, and that's where I put my accomplishments. Uh, it's small. Uh, we barely manage. Our little one room has an area of 24 to 20 feet, basically probably half the size of what the selection selection room uh, does in um, one day. We're constantly moving furniture, trying to get programs out. I have a great staff. We have great volunteers who help us, but every day is a challenge making this work. 
Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, so Mary, just to, as far as your program coordinator, just five hours a week? Right she gets paid five hours a week right now while performing the grant money. But as we try to bring in more programming, obviously, that's not enough. And actually, sometimes when she's in there, it's not all programs. She has to answer phones, take calls, uh, and serve with the public like maybe even our administrative system does. We never know what calls are coming in and she's taking the phone calls and taking messages and listening to our clientele. And again, you're requesting... Uh, um, how many more hours here? Or, uh, Ten more hours. Ten more hours. Paid for by the town. Cur currently, we don't. Ex Mary, excuse me. Ahead, currently, we don't expend any money on this position right now. No. We just give you an no, hour a day. And again, we anticipate the formula grant money would continue, and this would just supplement that? Yes, we hope, yeah, as of now, it's continuing, obviously. Uh, hopefully, when we get our next census in, um, those numbers will change what we get right now. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Yes, we hope, yeah, as of now, it's continuing, obviously. Hopefully, when we get our next census in. Mrs. Gonzalez, any questions? No, I have no questions. Mr. Schultz? No, no questions. Yeah, members of the finance team, any questions? I just have another question for, for Mary, Madam Chair. Just to, and again, you know, money's tight. Money's tight all the way around, and you know, you're looking for ten additional hours for your outreach coordinator, and ten hours for the program coordinator. Can you help us by prioritizing? Oh, I hate to prioritize, but absolutely, my uh, outreach coordinator, especially at times like today, calls we're receiving, absolutely, to make a full-time position out of uh, that outreach coordinator position is vitally important. Okay, thank you. Especially at times like today, calls we're receiving. Mr. Palmer wrote no questions here. That's from everyone, I think, right? All right. Thank you, Dan, for letting me know. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Prenny. Thank you for everything you're okay. doing. I just want to end that I was really hoping to do a, a three-minute time-lapse video on what actually happens at the senior center in a week. And we were going to film that on a Wednesday morning. And our beautiful building was closed on Tuesday night. So hopefully in the next near future, we'll be able to show that to you. We will welcome you back with that. Yes. We're going to film that on Wednesday morning. Thank you, Mary. All righty. Thank you all. Thank you for Thank you, Mary. Thank you for volunteering, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. All right. So it's our treasurer next, Mr. Gilberto. Correct. Yes, Mary, are you there? Thank you, Mary. Thank you for volunteering. Thank you. No. Mary Ann? Okay. <laughs> I don't think Marianne is there. Matt, are you there? Uh, yes, uh, Marianne appears to be in the meeting, uh, but she's on mute at the moment. Okay. okay. <laughs> I don't think Marianne is there. Uh, Matt, are you there? She, maybe she fell asleep, you know? Hold on, let me unmute her. Marianne, you there? Marianne? She maybe she fell asleep. Yeah. Okay, we'll move to Mr. Cooper if we could. Marianne there? Do you want me to um Oh there she is right there. She should be her line should be open. Yeah, I mean, I, do you want me to just quickly go right, do the rundown of what she presented in the packet for us, Mr. Gilberto? I mean, maybe we just go to Mr. Cooper. I know he's ready for IT. Oh, sure. Okay. I'm, all right. Matt, you good? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, just a brief summary of what your uh, the changes are. Uh, in general, I've tried to increase our leases and our professional services budgets a bit. 
So to expand out our use of them uh, presently, we're trying to leverage contracting either outside help or contracting lease of devices for a more effective management of our of our uh, hardware. Uh, I'm looking to cut back on a few uh, pieces in the budget that we're simply we haven't really been fully utilizing for a few years, and I couldn't justify keeping them at the existing spot. Um, if the need changes in the future, I'll bring it up then. Um, but things like uh, membership and the miscellaneous to, to, uh, membership dues and uh, other miscellaneous charges, I wanted to uh, drop significantly because we hadn't maxed them out in a few years. Okay. Members, have any questions? Mr. O'Leary? <laughs> Uh, nothing other than, uh, first of all, thank you, Matt, for all that you're doing. It's, again, not, not an easy task that you're, you've been charged with here. But, um, you know, I, I just want to ensure that we have the technology we need and keep it timely and keep it up to date. Um, you know, I don't want you to be shy because, uh, as we can see, this is uh, evolving even further as a result of what we're, what we're experiencing right now. So, uh, to me, you know, we, we can't shortchange ourselves we shouldn't be shortchanging ourselves in this particular area. So um, please be bold and please be uh, upfront with us and let us know really what you need. Uh, I appreciate all the effort you, you put in. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Waller. I agree with uh, Steve. Please pray say it. Thank you. Mr. Schultz. I know, Matt, in your so you only hear yourself when things go wrong, and I just want to say you've done a lot of, you've made a lot of patients since you've been with the town, and I know you've implemented quite a bit as far as uh, in your field, and I would want to thank you for everything you've done so far, and echo my colleagues, if you need something, just let us know. Will do. Mrs. Gonzalez? I will echo my colleagues. Thank you for all you do. Same, Matt. Same for carrying us through this. This is, I guess, pushing us into the next century anyway. So we have the technology. We just have to get used to it, I think. So members of the finance team, could do you, any of you have any questions? I guess pushing us into the next century anyway. So you have your hands up. Oh, Mrs. Mrs. Harlebit. I don't have a question on that, um, and obviously we all value um, all that we've done to help us during this particular time, but I think it goes further than that, that over the last several years that he's been on board and brought the town from somewhat limited technology standpoint into something that's far more up to date, so he deserves kudos not just for uh, right now, but for how is that moved to this point? We happily accept kudos in the form of checks made out to me. <laughs> I'll just give you my credit card, man. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mrs. Hurl. But any other questions? I don't see any other hands. So thank you, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Mary Ann, were you able to call in? Yes, I'm here now. The town Sorry about that. No problem. That's okay. All right, so we're just reviewing the submission that you provided. If you want to just do a quick rundown of that, that would be great. Sure. So in my treasury budget, um, the only increases I have are for the professional um, services, which is the contractual, uh, the contract settlement, um, cost of living, and um, the merit increases. Excuse me. Those are the st those are the standard ones that we would be expecting. We see Correct. That every year. All right, and your assessor, assessor's budget? Um, I would do my collector's budget. I mean, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> your collector's budget, sorry. That's okay. So the other 
two items that I did increase were um, for um, postage, which is because of the new construction that um, the poultry, and then um, the travel budget, and that would be for my staff to go to educational and training um, classes to further their education. Mr. O'Leary, any questions? Mr. Walner? Mr. Schultz? Mrs. Gonzalez? I'm all set. I'm all set too. Any members of the finance team? I see no hands. Mr. Gilbert, do you see any hands? We're all set. I don't see any. All right. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You you do? Abby's hand just went up. Oh, Mrs. Ferrellbeck. We're all set with this budget. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Next. Thank you. Is the finance director on? Are you there? The finance director is here. There she is. All right, Mrs. Rourke, thank you. You know, you're up next. Good, e good evening, everybody. Um, my finance budget um, is only increasing um, in professional services for cost of living and merit increases. Um, what is comprised in my finance budget is the finance director and the assistant finance director's um, salary. And that's all that is within the finance um, budget. Any questions on that? Moving on to the accounting budget, um, the accounting budget um, uh, covers um, my administrative assistant um, as well as my accounting analyst. Um, so you will see merit and cost of living increases in personal services within those um, line items. Um, if we move down to professional services accounting, there's an increase of $20,000, and that increase is um, due to um, implementing munis uh, payroll accruals and HR um, uh, software. So we ha don't have those modules implemented as of the time, and so that's what we will be doing. Okay, questions. Mr. O'Leary? Mr. Walner. Uh, no questions. Thank you. Mr. Schultz. Just a quick comment. Uh, Ms. Rourke, I just I want to recognize you publicly as well. I know you're doing a lot with this COVID-19 crisis, not necessarily part of the budget here, but I just think publicly I want to say thank you for everything you've done as well. Thank you very much. Mrs. Gonzalez. No, thank you. You're much appreciated. Thank you. Okay. I see Mrs. Hurlbeck's hand is raised. Um, we have no questions about uh, well, I don't know uh, about budget, politics, and uh, she was certainly to receive several pats on the head. Um, <laughs> times as well as the rest. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much for all the effort you've put in and the, all the extra effort that you normally do put in. So it's not a surprise that you were thank one of our round the clock you. people. We really appreciate everything you do for the town. Thank you very much. Okay, so I have on the agenda the um, public safety budget next. Right, Madam Chair, I have the... Uh, I have reports on the, the remaining four budgets, if I could just take them together and then I'm happy to answer any questions. Sure. So with regard to public safety administration, um, our objectives are to continue to coordinate with the town, um, develop and initiate a public safety dispatch to participate in contract bargaining sessions with the fire union to promote professional growth and development opportunities for the public safety department heads. 
to assist the Public Safety Department heads in providing continued professional education to develop and maintain employees' knowledge of skills and abilities, um, to assist the Public Safety Department heads in developing the strategic plans. Um, when this position was first proposed, it was my hope that we could improve the coordination of public safety departments to prepare for growth and for unforeseen public safety emergencies that could arise from time to time. And I think that we find ourselves in the midst of one of them um, right now with the COVID-19 situation. Um, with regard to the town administrator's budget, it includes contractual adjustments and adjustments for increasing costs. Um, we have been working to prepare the workspace for the project manager grant writer position, although uh, I am concerned now about our ability to sustain that position, um, given the new uncertainty uh, in the state and potentially in the town's budget. The select board budget reflects transitioning the recording secretary duties to other uh, personnel uh, in the form of a lump sum compensation of $175 per meeting, which would include the meeting and writing up the minutes. This would create additional capacity in the select board's office during the regular work week, which is currently dedicated to um, transcribing the meetings. And then with regard to town council, it's adjusted to reflect the balance of how funds are expended uh, between labor council and general council, and it eliminates the subscription to the general laws based on the fact that they are available um, online. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Mr. O'Leary? Mr. Waller? I guess I'll just ask the obvious question. How much, uh, do you know, with that um, $175 per meeting, um, how much time will that give to Jane? Well, uh, I believe, I anticipate that the structure moving forward, it would not be Jane who would be recording the minutes. It would be um, somebody else. Um, this is a model that we found just doing some research at some other communities have been going to um, rather than the hourly um, compensation which you give a, it, it's basically the risk is, uh, you know, the meeting could be really short and the minutes could be really short and they might be not, you know, it, it might not align with the expense, but the meeting could be very long um, and there might be occasions where it doesn't account for the, the expense in terms of the effort that the person has to put in. Um, a difficult position and we've been very fortunate that we've been able to, to have a structure in place um, like we've had with somebody in the office actually <laughs> but that wasn't necessarily the structure beforehand um that uh, and it, it's been pretty common for us to have a recording secretary who's been um separate from the staff in the office um, that is uh, that's the intention looking forward based upon um, uh, um jane's desire um and um, her hope to be able to focus on the office work uh, exclusively so. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Talk too much. <laughs> no. So Mr. O'Leary, I see your hand raised. So this is not. Um, this isn't an augmentation of the position. This is a replacement. Correct. So, Will be replacement. Correct. Yes. Yeah. No. So board members by Lou and our person. This is not. Uh, this isn't an augmentation. Yes. Okay, just, just for the meeting, <laughs> yeah, just for you. the just for the meeting minutes, though. Correct. Yes, yeah, yeah, so we're not we're not going to lose our lose our person. But that's correct. What's going to happen with the licensing and license renewals and all of that? Is that going to be divvied out somewhere else, or yeah. you expect that the licensing would still be handled by Jane, uh, and she would have more time to dedicate to it moving forward? Um, it would purely be the recording of the, uh, the minutes and the transcribing of the minutes. Um, transition to somebody else. She would still play that role, along with the appointments as well, which she is involved in. That's good. That's important. She's doing a great job. Thank she you. Is. She is. We believe we have a solution that will work for work well for everybody. That's great. Mr. Wallen, did you were you to finish with your comments? Okay. Um, Mr. Schultz. Miss, you're all set. Miss Gonzalez. Yep. Is that the approval I hear, Jane? <laughs> someone at my someone at my door, my dog wants to greet. Mrs. Gonzalez, you all set? I am all set. All right. Any members of the finance committee? Mrs. Hurlbut? I see Mrs. Hurlbut's hand up. Uh, 
Um, I can't imagine a finance uh, a um, select board meeting that was going to be short. So I think this is probably going to be bang for the buck. Uh, no, we have no further questions as far as I know about the other budgets that the town administrator has just enumerated. Okay. okay. Is that, I think that's town council. Right. Did we go through town council? Uh, I did go through that with a brief description, yes. I must have missed that. Hey, did we do assessing? Madam Chair, just a, a question. Oh, yeah. just, just a question on, uh, on town council. Are we anticipating uh, uh, appropriating additional funds in the upcoming fiscal year for the 40B? So th this uh, this does not include a request for that, but uh, depending upon the way things progress, that may be something we can include as either a warrant article or, or as um, as this. Um, I struggled with whether to put it into the operating budget only because I know there was so much community interest on it, and um, you know we, we had it as a transfer in October, but I think clearly there were people there specifically for that. So I mean, we can do it either way. We could do it either way, but it seemed like there was enough interest that it would warrant a warrant article. Well, it's not just not just a uh, question of, of uh, you know warranting a warrant article. You know, it, it's uh, it's it's going to be an ongoing uh, piece of uh, should we say litigation of sorts. Yeah. You know, it's foreseeable for the next couple of years at a minimum, and we need to. But I didn't see it in our uh, list of warrant articles proposed for June as of yet. So I just wanted to make sure it doesn't get lost in the shuffle, doesn't get lost in the discussion. Yes. The, for the upcoming fiscal year. You know what do we anticipate um, the needs to be? And to me, it, it, we're going to utilize town council as a conduit, whether it be for professional services or, or otherwise. We just need to adjust this budget and adjust it appropriately. So uh, yep. maybe uh, you know, the next meeting or at some point, you know, I, I think it should just be included in town council budget, just as another specific line item, maybe or a sub subtitle. Sure, I think it's appropriate there, not necessarily a warrant article. I, I get it. Um, you know, we had a warrant article to transfer our money in, but it was the desire of the board uh, unanimously to supplement the town council budget, you know, back in October. So, you know, I just think it needs to be reflected now. It's going to be an ongoing matter for at least a couple of years, maybe more. I think we need to supplement it with a number um, that we can. That we know about, so I think we need to put it in. Sure. So well, we can modify the request to reflect that, and I'll get a number from town council. <laughs> okay. See, I don't see any other questions here. I think we just have assessing left. I, I think I caused us to skip assessing, Madam Chair. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, I got to it too soon, and then we left it. So, where do we have the assessor on here? I don't. She's on the call. Yes. All right. Yes. Good. Good evening to everyone. Oh, welcome. Well, I got to it too soon. So, to go over the assessing budget, the professional services and the training and education are kind of a joint um, reason for the increase being. We're in the midst of the camera conversion. We're rounding the corner. The first tax bill coming out of the new system will be the actual tax bill being this December. So to make sure that I have proper timing for certification of my values, I just wanted to be prepared in case I needed a little bit of help in the field doing the building permits and the sales. So that was the increase um, with the professional services that uh, for inspections. Uh, training in ed, I do want to send one of our girls to UMass Amherst in August. So that was the majority of the increase uh, being 850 on that. And additional training in the event that we need it leading up to the tax bill for the new system. 
when we originally received training, it, it really was fast and furious. I feel as though we really should have and deserved more training. So we're learning it. Um, and the girls are doing a great job. But just to ensure that we do get out a timely tax rate and timely tax bills is my biggest concern. So it's a modest increase. Are there any questions? Mr. O'Leary? Mr. Walner? No, thank you. Mr. Schultz? <laughs> Ms. Mrs. Gonzalez? No. Members of the finance team? No. I see no hands. No, we have no questions. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Hurlbut. All right, thank you. I thank you. I have a question for uh, the town administrator concerning uh, mm -hmm. uh, one of the warrant articles. Okay, yes. Um, All right, thank you. Uh, Mike, it was um, my understanding that we try and move the $50,000 that we annually do in the fall uh, for buildings uh, over, uh, by, uh, over to their regular budget. Um, you know, that, that, that's a model that we can, um, that we can follow. Um, where that article has been on in the past, we left it on the list. Um, but uh, I'd like to consult further with the uh, the DPW two about what those projects might be um, in light of some a bit of a backlog of unfinished projects as well. So. Right. No, I understand that, but uh, I think that this this discussion concerning putting it over into their budget came about um, because of our efforts to keep as many financial articles as possible. Out of the October, uh, out of the fall town meeting. Yes. Maybe we could follow up on that and perhaps eliminate it from the uh, spring town water. Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Madam Chair. Oops. Madam Chair. Oh, <laughs> I was muted. I'm sorry. Is there anything else any of the members want to add? Mr. O'Leary? I'll say thank you. Okay. Mr. Walner. I'm good. Thank you. Mr. Schultz. Oh. I'll say Mrs. Gonzalez. Is there anything okay. else? Okay, we know that this is going to be a difficult time right now, Mr. Gilberto, and for our finance director to put your heads together and put all of our heads together to balance this out mm -hmm. and do some projections of what the future financial landscape looks like for us, as difficult as that is going to be. We do know that the current crisis is going to impact finances, um, so we want to as you normally do and as Liz normally does, be ahead of that as mm -hmm. much as we possibly can and avail ourselves of whatever aid is available to municipalities and whatever credits and things of that nature might come be available to us to deal with the extra expenses that we're incurring too. Um, I don't think any members of the finance team have anything else. And thank you for... Everyone that joined us, I think our last order of business is a vote, or Thank second you. to the last is the vote. Oh, I'm sorry. Do we have you? Do you want to report for us, or do we already do that? We already did that. I, I, I wanted just to express, you know, my thanks to all of you for participating in this call. Um, you know, I, I don't know whether folks realize it, but um, you know, we're continuing to operate government here in North Reading under very challenging situations. And, you know, there have been, there have been changes, but all of the essential business that we've had to take place has been able to take place in our community. And I just, it, it's because of the flexibility of, of the volunteers such as yourselves um, to be willing to set aside the time 
<coughs> and to participate in this type of forum, um, which I think went very well this evening. So I just want to thank you all. I really, really appreciate it. And I want to thank you. And I want to just mention that I appreciate the opportunity to test my uh, technological skills. <laughs> so good. So speaking of which, we had another meeting earlier, and I couldn't figure out the microphone or the camera. So me too. <laughs> All right. So thank you to um, those who have joined us. Our second to the last order of business is a, a vote to go into executive session, and then the last order of business would be to adjourn. And I think if the members vote to go into executive session, we won't be returning back into regular session. So. Do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to enter into executive session for the purpose of exemption three, collective bargaining and pending litigation, fire union and secondary school building project. Such discussion and open session will have a detrimental impact on the town and to admit the following, nobody. Right. And further that select board will return. No, we won't return, correct? Well, so open session, the sole purpose of adjournment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. Schultz. Mr. O'Leary? Aye. Mr. Walner? Aye. Mr. Schultz? Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez? Aye. And I vote aye. I have a motion.